What's the deal? What's the deal? This is just the law. Meanest man alive. Meanest man alive. Jedi mind tricks. Insomniac magazine. You know what I mean? inspired you at the age of early teens to start making hip hop? Wow, man, you know, even, even before my early teens, I, I was influenced by PMD and a, a tribe called Quest, you know? Like, uh, they were my favorite groups back in the day. And it's, it's like, the kind of music I listen to now is more lyrically driven, where they were just more on some laid back cool shit, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was a different time. But yeah, the, those, for some reason, those are the icons that I fell in love with and made me love the music, you know? And let's talk a little bit about your, your entry into the game, because I would say that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I would say that your sound is more hard edged. Right, right, Talk right. to me a little bit about that. Talk to me about, did you have any, I mean, like a G-Rap? Was anybody, uh, uh, was there an artist out there that kind of influenced you into that side of hip-hop? Um, you know, probably probably more the Wu-Tang, Onyx dudes, you know, that the aggression that they put forth in the music, you know, it, it's just something that spoke to me, you know? And like, uh, without biting their styles, you know what I mean? Like. I think our, my style kind of just devolved into what it is now. You know, it wasn't like a, yo, we're gonna be like a hardcore group. You know, it was more just like, these are the rhymes, I'm, this is the kind of rhymes I write, and this is the kind of music we're gonna make, you know? Indeed, and if you had to categorize, and everyone hates to categorize, you know, their art, but if you had to categorize Jedi mind tricks, what category, or what slice of hip hop would you say that you guys dominate, if you will? Oh, wow. Um, the, the underground independent scene, you know, uh, I, I, we get labeled underground, but to me, we're, we're, we're making music that was played on the radio, maybe like when Wu-Tang was on the radio, maybe like in 95, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, they don't play them on the radio now, but we, we kind of still make that music that's, I wouldn't call us independent just because you get off into this like avant garde, uh, Backpack. yeah, backpacker type of style, you know, which is a, a, experimental. We're, we're never, we were never like that. We're, we're probably more like, like a, a, like a cool G rap over Wu Tang type beats, you know. And definitely has that gritty kind of kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost. I mean, when when you so just use the word independent. I would even say maybe independent MOP style kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. MOP, big influences, man. Yeah, like New York rap in general has always been hardcore. Like all the rappers I listened to were from New York, Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn. You know, like from that area. You know, so yeah, all the kind of music we make as a group and as solo is, is always gonna be like, it's gonna sound similar to that because that's what we grew up on. We have the roots in Philadelphia, but and that, that was more of just like a feel good hip hop group for me, you know what I mean? Like, I appreciate their music, but as far as like our style goes, we were always on some New York type of thing, you know? And let's let's talk a little bit about, about the group. I mean, Jedi Mind Tricks has definitely struck a chord with uh, and, and really have maintained a, a pretty strong cult following for a while now. If you, if you don't mind sharing why you think that, you, you know, your music has resonated with this audience that continues to follow you. I mean, pretty much we just stay in tune to what's going on. The, uh, we listen to all types of music, you know, like we listen to the mainstream stuff. We listen to the underground. And we're just purists, you know, like we, we have a, a real understanding of hip hop and of lyrics and lyricism. So it's like when we when we project that towards like in, into the music, you know, what I mean, I think it just comes across. It's like a, a real comes from a real place. You know, what I mean, it's not like we're just trying something, you know, what I mean, it's like we we've, we've perfected it, mastered it. 
and here's here it is for you now you know like we don't we're not experimenting anymore you know what i mean we're just constantly making uh the hardcore music let's talk a little bit about connecting with your audience in an era almost void of and, 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 and I mean, they're still there, they're still, you know, I guess, influential, but in many ways void of the dominance of record labels, especially in the independent side. Wow. You know, yeah, it's, it's more of like, uh, without the record label, you know, it's kind of like we get our chance to shine with the internet being how it is. But, uh, you know, it's kind of a catch-22 because that takes away from the sales of it but more people are exposed to our music. Like, when we go overseas, they're not so much hit over the head with uh, Lil Wayne and Rick Ross, you know what I mean? So when we go over there, we're just as big to them, you know what I mean? Like, they, they don't know the difference. But over here is where it starts, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be hot in, in where, where you're from first, and then you, you can move out and venture to other places, you know? Let's talk about what Jedi Mind Tricks does to reach their audience, to communicate with their audience, and, 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 and to build that sense of community. Because we're in an environment now where people, or fans, I, be, I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, expect more than maybe they did 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, I would say they do. You know, it's, it's because, like, like I said, it's, it's so easy to make a CD now. Like, any 14-year-old kid can get a, a MacBook, and make uh, like or get a, a pro tools and make a, a CD right out of his house you know so it's kind of like you got to step your game up you know what I mean because everyone's always getting better and it's getting easier to make the music so as far as promoting ourselves you know we're, we're really humble guys like if you approach me at the bar like I'm gonna shake your hand have a drink with you you know what I mean like we're really approachable we try to I try to hit back everyone on the Facebook you know what I mean that shouts us out it's like we, we try to show how much we we appreciate the fans you know we're in an environment obviously where we don't expect to see the units be moved that once were regardless of the genre right um, if you could talk a little bit about where you know where's the business right now in regards to someone that's making a living as a recording artist in 2011 going into 2012 you know, where is, where's the revenue coming from? Wow, you know, it, it, it's a tough struggle with us, you know, because for, for every five, I mean, for every kid that has a CD, maybe five of his friends have heard it, you know? But for every kid that downloads it, it's like, it's probably like, it's probably like uh, 10 to one, you know what I mean? Like, the kids that download it and buy it versus the kids that buy it, you know what I mean? So it's like, you may, your audience may be 10 times what the record sales are reflecting, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it's like most of the money comes from touring and the merchandise, you know, so we, we try to stay on the road as much as possible, you know, and, and just uh, try to sell t-shirts and CDs as much as possible, you know? It's like, it's hard, but I mean, as, as a musician, there, that's, there's really no other alternative for us, you know? It is what it is. And, and talk to me about your insight or your thoughts about, you know, because it was, it was, you mentioned, you know, illegal downloading or, or BitTorrent sites, which are crazy, because you could download someone's whole career. Yeah, right? discography, with, with yeah. The click of a button. But what about these new legal services, such as like a Spotify, that, you know, are legal, but uh, the revenue isn't necessarily there because we're talking about streams and not downloads. Right, right, right. Any right. thoughts on that at all? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just a, it's to me, it's like another avenue for people to hear the music. If, if, they, if they download it for free, but they come out and show their support at the shows, you know, buy tickets to the shows and, and buy merch, you know, it, it, it kind of levels it out. But I mean, yeah, I mean, them taking away that, that $10 for every CD, it, it does hurt, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, we, we still continue to, to do what we gotta do, you know? And it, 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 what about vinyl? You guys still deal in vinyl? Yeah, I think the, uh, yeah, we press up vinyl of the, um, like this record, la Violence Begets Violence, there's vinyl. You know, just for, it's, it, that's more of our like, our, uh, our paying tribute, you know what I mean? To the, 
to the DJs, you know what I'm saying, and to the people that still crave for that vinyl. You know, that'll never, for a DJ, like, having a, a physical copy will never go out of style. You know, there's still people who even after downloading will buy the physical CD, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, we try to, we try to reach them, you know what I mean? When you guys first started, college radio was still very prevalent and definitely a place where you could build an audience with music that traditionally would never get played on commercial radio. Right. Can you talk about that? What is, where, where's the value in either mix show or college radio today? Um, you know, uh, we still do radio interviews, you know, um, Serious satellite radio is popping for us, you know, uh, we, we, we still try to hit that market because you never know who's listening, you know what I mean, you never know who might catch wind of, of, of the new stuff and be interested. So yeah, we, we still try to hit the radio up, you know, but uh, it's like, like I said, the mainstream radio is, is not messing with us at all. But yeah, college, college radio definitely gets the, crowd, gets the kids out there to support the music, you know? So you still feel college radio is relevant? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because, you know, uh, it's like a lot of people, they don't know what to listen to, you know what I'm saying? And if you, if you just turn on, if you're into independent music, you just turn that on, you get a whole variety, you know what I'm saying, of, of what like, is going on in the scene, you know? The DJ is still in control of, of hip hop, you know? So you guys obviously are, are totally independent now. Totally, totally. And, and are you guys working with any distributors for traditional retail sales? Yeah, yeah. Tra yeah, uh, you can find us in FYE or Best Buy, you know, the, uh, the latest CD. Yeah, the stores, they do help. You know, it, it costs a lot to get your CD into stores, but you know, it's worth it if it's selling, you know what I mean? It, it's a, you might lose money if it's not selling, but for us, you know, it's always been a positive thing. If you don't mind sharing one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned during your journey in the music business. You know, I mean, this is, it's gonna sound cliche, but you know, follow your dream is like, it's something that's always stuck with me because at 19, you know, when we first started recording, I just left school. Like I, I did a year and a half of college and that, that wasn't working out. And then I would, I just, as soon as the day I came home, maybe two weeks later, we record, we started recording Violent by Design, you know? I linked up with Vin and that, that was like our best album, you know? I mean, I think our new album's hotter, but you know what I mean? It, it kind of just paved the road for what we're doing right now. So it's like, I always believe in that. Like, yo man, if you want something bad enough, if you work hard for it, it's gonna happen for you, you know? And like, I, I kinda just stuck with that. And, and, and beyond, uh, obviously, following your dreams, if you had to give advice to someone that's serious about getting into this business, you know, I would say, is it? you think it's tougher than ever to build a career, or do you think that it's easier than ever? It's almost kind of both sides, right? You know, it's like a kid with a lot of money could, could shoot some high-quality videos. He could pay someone to get the beats. He could pay for guest spots all over his album, you know. But, uh, you know, the real talent lies within, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you're, you're gonna get exposed whether you're good or not, you know what I mean? Like, and that's what's all, all that's gonna matter in the end. But yeah, I see a lot of kids, they take that route of, oh, uh, let me just get a couple guest spots, big name guest spots, and maybe I'll get recognized in the crowd of, and of all those people. But at the same time, you take away from yourself, you know? Like with this album, it, it, we didn't go too guest heavy. It was pretty much people that we just drink at the bar with every weekend, you know? So we stayed consistent with we really don't need outside help making our own album, you know? Got it. And, and if you could just share uh, what people should expect from this new album. Oh man, I, I think this is our most hardcore album that we put out to date, you know? Uh, it's just me and Vin, we're, we're at the top of our game with our lyrics and we just kinda came as hard as we could. You know, it's a, it's a competition thing with me and Vin because if he like if he's got a hot rhyme, I'm gonna be like, 
now I got it. You know what I mean? It's like, and if I come hot, he's like, okay. Now, he, you know what I mean? We may even shut the session down for the week. Like, we'll come back to it next week. You know what I mean? But we both make sure we destroy them tracks. You know what I'm saying? To like the best of our ability. 